Welcome, I'm Renaya, and today we cover another portion of our ongoing series. But first, consider the following two questions. Question 1. Question 2. And both to be answered now on today's Food to Go, Ancient Words for Modern Man. Let's begin. Verse 22. Accept no person against thy soul, and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. So our first question, should a righteous person accept anyone? And the answer is no. If someone is going against you, against your person, we should allow no factor to cause us to continue going before that person and only to our own demise. Now, some people may bring up Matthew chapter 5, verse 39, about turning the other cheek, but we only have two cheeks. Even when it comes down to the 70 times set, is this for a brother who's coming and asking for forgiveness? Is no way referring to anyone out in the world, just allowing them to continue to rape, rob, pillage, to do things against you, against your soul. So that must be taken into account when we look at the verses collectively. Verse 23, and refrain not to speak when there is occasion to do good and hide not thy wisdom in her beauty. So we should always be on the lookout in season, out of season to share the gospel, to share the good news, to share things that will be an encouragement to other people. And we should never fear the dictates of worldly men. Now, is there an optimal time to do things? Sure. I would say that if you are in the process of working on a phone call with someone else and you're trying to shoot back and forth different words of wisdom, probably not the best time. But when you have that break, when you're free from work or, or any other obligation, yes, we should be searching for those times to share with another. Verse 24, for by speech wisdom shall be known and learning by the word of the tongue. So. We know a person, they're defined by their conversation. So we must always be mindful of our speech, for it teaches us about a man. Matthew 12, verse 34 tells us that from the heart, the mouth speaks. So this should be a practical that we always retain in our heart whenever we enter into a conversation. Verse 25, in no wise speak against the truth, but be abashed of the error of thy ignorance. So straightforward, don't lie, be truthful at all times. If there is something that you are unaware of, be swift to admit it. There's no utility in carrying on a deception. So be abashed, blush at your ignorance. Verse 26, be not ashamed to confess thy sins and force not the course of the river. So when we're talking about being ashamed, of course, we're talking about blushing again. So be far away from blushing or turning your head or looking away. Just man up or woman up and tell people what has happened with the goal of never repeating it again. And here we're given a parable as well of a river. And this is how it is when we force ourselves to stay away from admitting our faults to one another. It's like us trying to take a river and forcing it to stop, to divert it to a different pathway when it's already coming strongly at us. Our conscience is eating up at us. We have to gush it out, but we're trying to put a dam in front of this natural flow, which is to be vulnerable and open and transparent so that we are pure and clear as the water of this river. Verse 27. May not thyself an underling to a foolish man, neither accept the person of the mighty. So first, what is an underling? An underling is what I would call an apprentice. And who is a foolish man? Well, a foolish man is someone who is lawless. So what the Most High is telling us in this verse is stay away from bad influences and those who would discourage faith in serving the Most High. And we can see that all around us. You may have a businessman. He is wildly successful financially, but he has no qualms in taking someone out and lying and destroying his own reputation so that he can make a couple of dollars more. This is who we need to stay away from, learn nothing from those who are lawless. Verse 28, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. Okay, so our second question, can a wise man ever stop learning? And the answer is no. We must strive continually. There's always something new, something just around the corner, some new ones that we can gain. Even when we have been in this fight, 
in this process of being continued students for a decade, for two decades, for 50 years. So the Most High covers the rest. If we will bring something to the table, if we will strive with diligence, he will cover us and give us that which we are lacking. Verse 29, be not hasty in thy tongue and in thy deeds slack and remiss. So the short of this, don't talk big, but deliver small. It's better to do something and then talk about it in moderation. So there's no boasting at all versus saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do and then fall off the bandwagon altogether. Verse 30, be not as a lion in thy house and are frantic among thy servants. So protect the house. Be a lion toward those who would destroy it. As Proverbs 28 verse 1 says, the wicked flee, but the righteous are bold as lions. So it's good to be a lion. It's good to be that protector of those who are weak. But when it's turned internally, it becomes something that is very wicked. Verse 31, let not thy hand be stretched out to receive and shut when thou shouldest repay. So the takeaway from this verse is keep your promises, even when it hurts to do so. In this way, we shall find favor before Most High and before man. Let's review. Now for our sword ready verse. And that's a wrap. Until next time, Shalom.